I'm back, back again in the guest room slash yarn hoard room. And it is finally time for me to share my yarn stash. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra and today I'm going to share with you my yarn stash. Yarn stash meaning all of my sweater quantities. So I'm not going to be sharing every skein of yarn in my yarn collection. If you want a more comprehensive overview of all of the yarn in my collection, you can head over to my Ravelry account. But today we're going to talk about these sweater quantities, which I would say makes up a vast majority of my total stash. So by sharing the yarns that I have in sweater quantities, I'm more or less sharing most of my stash. You'll get a pretty good idea of what we're working with here. So yes, sweater quantities only. What does that mean? That means I'm not including any single skeins, partial skeins, scraps, or yarn that I have designated to knit accessories. This is going to have some overlap with my previous video that shares my 2023 knitting plans, um, but it's just going to be all of my sweater quantities instead of just the six that I committed to knit this year. Other thing to note as it relates to the projects that I have planned for these sweater quantities, they are subject to change as is mostly everything that I talk about on this channel. So what I say I have planned to knit with a particular yarn today might change by the time I get ready to actually knit the yarn. As far as how this is going to be organized, I'm going to talk about this yarn in order of weight. So we're going to start with fingering and we're going to end with worsted. The other disclaimer I wanted to put in this intro is that I personally feel like I have a lot of yarn. Bear in mind what I'm sharing with you is not all of the yarns. And so whenever I say something like I have a lot of yarn or this is too much yarn or it's stressing me out, it is entirely personal. You may have three times, four times, 10 times as much yarn as I have and you feel like there's never enough or you feel like what I am sharing is not nearly as much as what you have and therefore how can I have a lot when you have more than me and you don't think that you have a lot. Again, entirely subjective, entirely personal, and I just felt like I needed to say that, or well, not needed to, but I wanted to say it because um, on Instagram and social media in general, I've seen a lot of people sort of stash shaming. Bear in mind that a yarn stash is extremely personal. My stash down and no buy initiatives are because I personally have a desire to maintain a smaller stash going forward. And so I'm going to take steps to enable me to do that. And that's really it. That's the end of it. It has nothing to do with you. I just happen to be sharing it. So take that however you want. Let's get into the stash tour. I have all of my sweater quantities logged in my Ravelry crew. Ravelry Q. And I have my laptop down here. So if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. So First one is my 10 skeins of Hudson and West Weld in the color Lake. I showed this in my last video with my 2023 knitting plans. I'm going to be making the Fairy Building Sweater by Sloan Rosenthal. I talked more about this in my 2023 knitting plan, so we don't have to get too far into it. Next up is another sweater quantity of Hudson and West Weld in the colorway Mallard. It's a really lovely green. Again, this lighting washes it out terribly in person. I think it's a very dark, rich forest green. And with this, I'm going to make the Citrine Light by Emily Green. She has a worsted weight version of this pattern that she released first. And more recently, back in September 2022, she released this fingering weight version. And so I have nine skeins of this. Love that. Love that, love that, love that. The next fingering weight sweater quantity I have is the Fiber Company Amble in the color Fair Hill. So this is technically a sock yarn, I believe. This has 
100 grams, 325, uh, 355 yards, 70% wool, 20% alpaca, and 10% nylon. And it has a really pretty heathered, multicolored yarn. I think from a distance, it definitely reads green, but you can see patches of like burgundy and copper. It's really pretty and I fell in love with the color. I bought this at Nina Chicago, I don't know how long ago. It was an impulse purchase because this is one of the rare occasions where I bought a sweater quantity without an actual sweater uh, pattern in mind. So I sort of scrambled through Ravelry and I finally landed on this poncho pattern called Possibility by Margaret of Heidi and Lana. It was published back in 2019. It is a fingering weight poncho. Really like this pattern. I actually found this pattern maybe a couple years ago, but the thought of knitting anything large scale like a poncho or a garment and fingering weight was just unfathomable for me. Obviously that picture has changed drastically. Um, so yeah, it comes in one size. It calls for 1600 or 1680 yards. And I only have 1420, so I don't have as much yarn as the pattern calls for, but the pattern does have a lot of positive ease. It's a large, two large rectangles seam together with some buttons. I think I can fudge the gauge a little bit. I might size down the needles and my poncho will come out smaller, but it will still sort of fit nicely. Hopefully, we'll see how it goes. Again, I bought this without a sweater in mind and this is the situation I'm in. I'm gonna probably be paying some serious yarn chicken, but it is what it is. So as far as sweater quantities, I only have one sweater quantity and sport weight yarn. And that is three skeins of this Amano Awa yarn. That's what the label looks like, A-W-A. So what the color looks like, the color is 1119. I don't know what the actual colorway name, but it's a really light teal, aqua. I'm not good at colors. It's definitely not in my color comfort zone for sure, but yeah, I'm excited for this project. So what I plan to make with this is the Rift Tea by Jacqueline Seaslack. I made myself one in 100% non-superwash wool and it was a short sleeve version. It doesn't really make sense that I made that, but it is what it is. Um, I love the drape and the fit of it. And I know I wanted to sort of as, finish, as soon as I finished that pattern, I decided I wanted to make another one. 805 yards, so I have I need 805 yards to make the version that I want to make. And I have 985 yards of this yarn. So this should be enough to make a long sleeve version in the third or fourth size of that pattern. So yeah, this is what that is going to become. So let's talk about my DK weight sweater quantities. First up is Kelburn Woolen's Scout. I have 1370 total yards of this yarn and the color I have is 278 oatmeal heather. So five skeins of this yarn. This is what it looks like. Love it. Nice neutral. It's very soft and plump and squishy. So I'm looking forward to knitting this up. And as far as the pattern I have planned for this yarn, I want to make the Hanko by Sari Nordland. So the Hanko actually calls for three individual colors. So a main color, which I'm gonna use this yarn for, and two contrast colors to create stripes along the sweater. This is a drop shoulder with some really nice looking short row shaping and some sort of wide and dramatic sleeves. I might modify the sleeves to be more fitted. But overall, I think this is a really solid pattern kind of a blank canvas with the striping. I can sort of use scraps 
from different projects to figure out what the striping will look like. So yeah, that's the plan for this Coburn Woolen Scout. The next DK weight sweater quantity in my collection is Blue Sky Fibers Skyland. So I have five skeins of this, which totals to 1,050 yards. And the color I have is 2403 and it's called Nightfall. I plan to make the Daybreak Sweater Tee. This is a pattern by Taylor Harris and it is a drop shoulder short sleeve tee with a stockinette main fabric and rows of pearl bumps. It looks really simple to do. And it features a cute detail at the back with this sort of button placket at the back. Yeah, that's the plan for this yarn. Oh, I almost forgot an additional DK weight pattern that I hadn't talked about because this yarn for this project is actually not logged in my Ravelry queue. So I talked about this briefly in my 2023 knitting plans video. Um, and that is the yarn that I'm going to use to make the patchwork pullover by Sorella. I have all of the yarn here, so I figured I would show you. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors of yarn, seven total skeins. This is what they look like. So I'll pop in a picture of what that pattern looks like. But the sleeves are solid colored. And I have two skeins of this Haiku Sueño yarn. And that is what I'm going to use for the main color. So the sleeves and the collar and the cuffs and the, the hem. And this is 80% Merino Superwash and 20% Viscose from Bamboo. And that's the one thing that all of these yarns have in common is that they're Superwash. I've never knit a Superwash garment before and that is mostly deliberate um, because I've heard horror stories of how much it stretches and how unpleasant it is to knit with and how heavy they are. I've heard more negative things and positive things about superwash garments. So I have generally decided to not do them. But as I said in my previous video, I have a bunch of single skeins of sock yarn and I don't have a huge desire to knit that many socks. So I use this project as an opportunity to sort of repurpose that yarn and make a garment. And Okay, so let's go through the contrast colors. This is Leha or Leia. This is a Miss Pearl exclusive colorway dyed by Distortion Fibers. I got this from Miss Pearl, which is my local yarn store. And it's a really pretty bright green color. This is unlabeled, but this is a superwash merino and nylon blend. I'm not sure what the ratio is. And this is yarn I got from Die Hard Yarns in Oak Park, Illinois. We, my friend Felicia and I went yarn shopping during the Chicago Yarn Crawl and this is one of the participating stores and this is what I picked up from the store. And this is yarn that I picked up when I went to Portland, Oregon back in the fall with my husband for our anniversary. It's a really cool tweed yarn. I like a tweed moment. You can't really see it that much because the color is so washed out. Um, but this is from Duchess of Dye Pots Layered Fingering. It's 85% superwash wool and 15% nylon. I have this Knit and Bro hand dyed. The colorway is called Hot Chocolate. The blend is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon. It's a really gorgeous reddish dark brown color. Also hand dyed, also fingering, also sock yarn. And the next color I plan to put in this project is actually a true DK. So the fingering weight sock yarns I'm going to hold in this project are 
I'm gonna hold them double to achieve the DK weight gauge because it is a DK weight pattern. But this one is actually DK. So the color is called Cremini DK. Nope, that's the base. The color is called Brainstorm. The base is Cremini DK and it's 100% superwash blue face luster. And it's like a yellowish, brownish, greenish, variegated color. There's a lot going on with this color. I find it absolutely beautiful. And the thing I like about this pattern is that one thing I struggle with hand dye yarns and why I don't really have an interest in knitting entire garments in hand dye yarn is because of the yarn management required. So oftentimes it's recommended to alternate skeins when you're knitting a garment and hand dye yarn so that you don't have any unattractive color pulling or you don't have any sharp lines when um, you switch skeins because even within the same dye lot there can be um, a lot of variety and the color saturation and speckling distribution between two skeins from the exact same dye pot which is just a characteristic of hand dye yarn and it's fine but given that I don't really have any interest whatsoever in alternating skeins it kind of excludes hand dye yarn for knitting garments in my opinion um, because although I don't have any interest in alternating skeins I also have no desire to have a sweater that has just harsh lines whenever I switch skeins or unattractive color pulling so I just kind of count it out entirely because I'm lazy and I admit that but a pattern like this allows me to use these yarns that I wouldn't necessarily use by itself in an entire garment for the reasons I just shared but instead I have individual squares on a much smaller scale I won't have to alternate skeins and they're all single skeins so I don't have to have any worries about like variations between different skeins of the same colorway. I think it's just the perfect type of project to use hand dyed yarn in a garment. And this is like sort of an epiphany I had because I had just I'm not really generally interested in hand dye yarns for garment projects, but a project like this has sort of changed my perspective on that. And so maybe in the future, if I'm interested in supporting these small businesses and these hand dyers, and I know that personally my favorite thing to knit is sweaters, maybe turning to patterns that are striped or color blocked or have some type of patterning that makes it so that I don't have to alternate skeins or I'm not knitting entire portions of the sweater in the same color that would necessitate alternating skeins. Yeah, I kind of feel like this has opened up some possibilities for me when it comes to using hand dye yarn and garment projects. Let's talk about my worsted weight. This is by far the most in terms of sweater quantities, not by a landslide, but I definitely have more worsted weight sweater quantities in my collection than not. And in the future, I would love to move more towards DK weight and fingering weight and sport weight garments. And I have a fair share of those, but I would definitely prefer to knit more fingering and sport weight as opposed to DK and worsted only because you get more bang for your buck you get more yardage per gram and I find the garments to be a lot more wearable the fabric is more comfortable it fits more nicely under layers for example and I think fingering and sport weight garments are more practical from a day-to-day -day wearability perspective so in the future, definitely want to inch towards more fingering and sport 
but for now worsted weight is the most that I have in my collection. Now first up we'll talk about the Hudson and West Forge and the color camel. I talked about this in my last video. I do plan to knit up this yarn this year and the pattern I want to knit is the Pitch Coat by Emily Green and I have 10 skeins of that yarn. Next up is the nine skeins of Patton's Croy that I have and I plan to knit the Ward Sweater by Sloan Rosenthal. This is the color Natural Mix. I have nine skeins. This is another one I talked about in my last video. So if it seems like I'm breezing through these, that's why. All right, next up, we have seven skeins of Hudson and West Forge in the color Honey. As I said before, love this color, excited for this project, and I intend to knit the Muna Jumper. Last but not least, we have these two yarns. Again, I mentioned it in my last video. Um, we have two skeins of the cream colorway. This is Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock Worsted, and this is the color 1303 Highland Fleece. I have two skeins of this. And I have three skeins of this color called 1302 Gravel Road. And with it, I plan to knit a self-drafted colorwork top-down circular yoke pattern. And there'll be more to come on that. I'll pop in an inspiration pic of the store-bought sweater that I'm trying to imitate with this project. But that's that. <gasps> Oh, I think I forgot a project. BRB, sorry about that. There was a project that I forgot to mention. So I have some odd quantities of Cascade 220 yarn. Specifically, I have three in this color called Carib Brown, color 1010. This is, these three skeins are left over from my self-drafted steaked cabled cardigan that I made a video about if you want to check that out and then I have five skeins of this yarn the color is 9696 I'm not sure what the color name of this one is but I really like this color it's actually quite similar actually not really kind of they have all of the same colors in them. It's similar to the, the Amble yarn that I'm going to make the Possibility Poncho with. They are sort of mixed with all of the same colors, but the Amble yarn leans more dark green and this leans more reddish brown. But the color variegation within them are pretty identical. There's just different ratios. So yeah, this is a really pretty color that I fell in love with and another example of buying yarn and not having a project for it because I bought five quantity or five skeins of this yarn with no project in mind and I wasn't really thinking about realistically how much yardage of worsted weight yarn that I needed to make something and so I just got five and called it a day only to realize that I don't really have enough to make anything that I want to wear so I found a color block cardigan pattern that I really liked and has a lot of possibilities in terms of the placement of the color block and is very customizable it has instructions with different types of button bands and and things like that so the the cardigan is called Tony it's designed by Julie Weisenberger and it's published in Coco Knits um, which I, as I understand it, they have like a very um, specific sort of sweater, cocoa knit sweater method. So I'm curious to see what the construction of this uh, cardigan is like. Um, I also have two skeins of this Cascade 220 in the color 2440, which is a tan color. I made my dad a hat in this same color. Um, so I figure I could incorporate these three colors of yarns somehow into a color, bli color blocked or striped cardigan situation. Who knows how much of each color I'll use or how I'll do the color black placement. But as of now, 
that's the plan with these yarns and that's everything and now that I've talked through all of my sweater quantities it doesn't feel like a lot it is a lot but it doesn't feel like a lot so I have I have shown you 12 sweater quantities of yarn so 12 sweater quantities of yarn that's a lot that's more than I can expect to knit through in a year. So I have enough sweater knitting to keep me occupied for probably the next year and a half or more, which is fine. I love that, but I don't at the same time because one thing I found is that when I buy yarn far ahead of me being ready to cast on a particular project, the longer it sits in my stash, the more I agonize over when I'll be able to cast it on. If I chose the right pattern, do I want to make something else with it? Um, do I love this color as much as I thought I did when I first bought it? Over time, preferences change, desires change, um, wardrobe needs change. And it hasn't really served me well to buy yarn um, so far in advance of actually knitting the thing I buy the yarn for. And having this amount of yarn in my stash, although you may not consider it to be a lot, it has been a source of stress and anxiety for me. And my whole desire to do the no bias stemming from a desire to eliminate that stress and anxiety, work through what I have and have a more minimal stash going forward. So that if and when I want to knit a new pattern, which is always of course, <laughs> I can buy the yarn as soon as I'm ready to cast on so that I can just start it right away. It doesn't linger in my stash and take up space in my brain and stress me out. Everybody has a different relationship with their stash and I just found that mine, when it gets past a certain point, um, it is unpleasant. So those are my sweater quantities. I'm looking forward to working through them. The plans may change, but the idea is the same. Uh, I definitely want to use them up and stash down as much as possible this year. And I'm excited for all of the projects that I share with you guys today. It's just a matter of time before I get around to them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.